Thanks everyone for, for flexing with the schedule. It's just, uh, you know, Pat's talk was just so awesome. I didn't see how we could just get out of that. Um, and, uh, you know, for those that are uh, sleeping in the back of the class, um, really what we're trying to, to talk about here is professors at play is about something important. And you can take it as simple as just increasing engagement in your classroom, but you can also take it to be something much, much bigger. But what I want to talk about, and this is something that just to kind of help make it a little more interactive, um, we'll just compress this a little bit, but this is this activity. It's the personal pointless project or how to feed your playful soul. This is a, just a quick activity that um, I'll give you the background for a second, but here's why we're doing it. It's really difficult to create a playful environment or a playful classroom if you're a stick in the mud. So we're always looking for ways to just enliven your own playfulness that you can bring to the classroom. So a few years ago, I was teaching a class about fun and uh, let me go back here. I was teaching a class about fun and I realized that the, my undergraduate students really weren't very good at fun. You know, they cook or they'd hike or they'd play video games. I really wanted to get them to be more imaginative in their play. So we invented this activity called the personal pointless exercise. It's very simple. And yes, I'm gonna have you kind of conceptualize this for yourself in the time that we have. But here's the three rules of a personal pointless exercise. The first rule, this is making more playful. One, pick something that you can do every day, um, and, and, you know, but you don't do every day. So, you know, like, like driving to work isn't something that you do every day. It's, it's something you just, you know, something that you do every day, but you don't always do every day. The second thing, don't pick something that you should do, but haven't been doing. So don't pick something like brush your teeth or be nice to people. You should be doing that anyway. And finally, pick something that's, don't pick something that's dangerous, difficult, or mean. We don't want to be negative, okay? So, so what does this look like in practice? You pick something you could do every day that you don't do every day. It shouldn't be something you should do. It should be relatively pointless. What do you come up with? Well, in order to help the students understand what I had in mind, um, I, you know, gave them some examples. So you could say, I'm just going to commit to never stepping on cracks. I'm just going to, I'm going to focus on this pointless activity of never stepping on cracks. Or you could just pick a, a goal for yourself. I'm going to eat pizza every day for a week. Um, or say hello and, and to everyone who gets within a you know, foot of you. I like this one. Wear a green shirt every day. See if anybody notices. Or, or I've never found anyone willing to accept this challenge. Tell the same joke to 50 people. Just as a, like a little pointless project that you're going to do for yourself to remind yourself to be playful. Well, here's what I showed my students to help them understand what I had in mind. I set an alarm on my phone for 444, 444 every day. And when it goes off, I stop whatever I'm doing and I take a picture. So how long have I been doing this? Um, I think I've been doing this for five or six years now. Um, every day at 444, I take a picture. Um, do I miss days? Yeah, some days I do. Some days I just forget or the alarm doesn't go off. But most days... And then people say, well, what are you going to do with this? I'm like, I don't know. I just do it every day. Every day I get that little reminder to be playful. It's like my brain remembers to just do something silly. I don't do it secretively, although sometimes I'm in meetings with my phone under the table, kind of taking a picture. Um, sometimes I have to stop a conversation, explain what I'm doing. But I want to give you a quick anecdote to show you how the power of pointlessness, the power of pointless play can really enliven your life. And this is a little quick personal story. And then in the time we have, I'm going to ask you guys to envision your own personal pointless project. So, so here's how 444 became a part of my life. Um, so I, I uh, was adopted as a baby and I had the, the opportunity to meet my birth dad just a few years ago. And this is Alan. You can see he's my dad because we look the same. So this man, I, I, you know, I met him this is probably three, four years ago. Um, I met him. He came to my home. He's from, from Chicago. And my phone went off at 444. I'm in the first two or three hours of meeting this person, uh, my father. And, and then my, my phone goes off and I say, hang on a second, Alan. I have to take this picture. You can see from the look on his face that he's kind of wondering if his progeny is mentally ill. But um, he, he kind of goes along with it. Flash forward six months, I'm visiting um, him in Chicago and we're driving and my family's in the car and the, the alarm goes off and he goes, hey, everybody, it's 444. And he makes them all hold up their hands. So he's like getting into the playfulness of this. And then maybe a year later, I'm visiting him down in Florida and you can see the change. Now he is in on the pointlessness of my activity. And so I still do it. I don't do it for a reason. I don't do it to connect with people, but I find that the natural playfulness of my personal pointless project reminds me to be playful. Now, that's my story. 
Now it's your turn. Now let's see, how much time do we have? We probably actually have enough time to do this in breakouts, but maybe, um, I don't know, Lisa, should we do breakouts or should we just have people kind of think about this and kind of share their ideas? Um, probably just share ideas here. We only have <clears throat> eight minutes, nine minutes. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'm, I'm not, again, the, the rules of the playposium are never to put somebody on stage, but always to invite participation. I want to hear your ideas for personal pointless projects or exercise. So, so, you know, you pick something you can do every day that you don't do every day. Pick something that you should do. Don't, I mean, excuse me, don't pick something you should do, but haven't been doing. And don't pick something dangerous, difficult, illegal, or mean. Anybody have a, a like an idea just that pops into their head of something that they would uh, be willing to do? Okay, here, Lauren, uh, pop on the camera and tell us what you think. Or here's Nick skipping instead of walking where people can see me. Yeah. You're muted, Lauren. Hi. Um, so I have Legos in my office and they're generally for students, uh, but I think I'm going to build something with Legos every day. There you go. Every day, every day. You got to do it every day. That's the important thing is every day. So here we go. Shelly, do a 30 second happy dance. What's your trigger for the happy dance? Are you just going to do it? Just going to get up in the morning and do a happy dance? Oh, that's a good point. I'm going to have to come up with something. I, I like your alarm idea. That might be helpful. Yeah, I have um, what my youngest is. She's 12. I've been trying forever to get her to do to fart at, at 222 two, two every day, 222. Two, two. She won't do it, but if anybody wants that one. Switching out stuffed animal in the background in my home office every day for Zoom meeting. I love it. Again, it's like it's something for you, right? Other people might notice it, but it's for you. It's just that reminder. It's like I got to change my environment, I got to stay playful. Dennis is going to dance with his, his five-year-olds. High five five times, yeah. Hug every family member I live with. Okay, Joni, how often? Every day? Just once? That's not a personal pointless. And by the way, you should do that anyway. So that violates the first clause, or is that the second clause. Oh, so Sharon, Sharon, will you tell us about the robot you hide around the house? This sounds like a perfect application of it. Yeah, it's just a little toy green robot and um, we hide it somewhere in the house. And then when you find it, you've been found and then it's your job to hide it. So it's just really fun because sometimes it's found, you know, within five minutes and other times it takes weeks. I love it. In, in my old office, um, someone had a sticker with a swear word on it. And the trick was to hide that sticker somewhere that you would find it at the most inopportune time that you'd open a notebook in a meeting and you'd be like, oh, I need to hide this sticker. So I love it. Elf on the shelf. Yeah, for sure. Who else has got a good one? Um, anyone? So some of them are starting to pop through. All right. I didn't see Heather. Melissa. Melissa, what was yours? Yell Yahtzee once a day when you go down the staircase. <laughs> yes, my family and I, we like to play Yahtzee and um, I never actually yell Yahtzee when you get it. So I, um, our rule is that you lose points. So it might help me actually improve my, my Yahtzee score when we play too. So your, your trigger for yelling Yahtzee is when you go down the stairs? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm also an introvert, so it'll put me a little bit out of my comfort zone. I read a book where you're supposed to come out of the of your bedroom each morning saying, ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> I might try that one too. Um, the smile game. As I walk on campus, I try to smile and get people to smile back. That, that's a good one. I think you should probably do that anyway, but that's an awesome one. Um, I have a friend just to continue to kind of as, as these ideas are coming out. He doesn't like he doesn't like pennies. I don't know. It's some weird thing, but he keeps pennies and then he throws them outside because he says he's giving people the opportunity to get good luck. So he's distributing good luck by throwing pennies out there. OK, so Julie, leave a post-it note with a positive message in the stall. Oh, I, I like that. Like uh, what? So give me an example. What are you going to leave? What, is, what are positive messages for the bathroom? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, anything, I guess that's happy could be a stick figure. It could just be a, a doodle, but it would be some, it would be a surprise. So the next person that comes in, it's just a surprise, but it could be a happy message, you know, hope you're having a good day. 
we I love have it. a we have a we have a whiteboard in the bathroom at our personal house and so we can leave messages and my kids will get up in the middle of the night just to leave a really funny message or to say hey don't forget to make my halloween costume it's been a great catalyst for writing and play absolutely and, and like if you think about julie's thing i mean it's like she's sharing this this joy and this mirth but think about it every time you go to the bathroom you're like oh i gotta get a sticky note and it reminds you that in the in the hustle and the bustle of the day, as you do your business, remember to play. I think the important thing of the personal pointless is it's personal. It's about you. It's about who you are. It's about your playfulness. The fact that it's pointless is a reminder that play, it, 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 it's, a, it's an attitude towards life. It's not just like, I'm going to play to get this. I'm going to play to win. I'm going to play to get ahead. It's about just play to play. What else? Anybody else? Somebody else? Let's get a couple more. Just pop on. Let's let's hear your ideas. I mean, these are wonderful ideas, and I want you to do all of them. It's about you owning your own playfulness. Yeah, put a googly eye sticker on an item wherever you are. Yeah. So, Kim, can you commit to carrying googly eyes in your pocket and and sticking them almost every day or every time you see a good spot? And by the way, I just, you know, to, to kind of help you frame this, a lot of times I do 444, I'm just driving home or driving somewhere. It's not always affecting somebody else. And I'm never, it's never a secret. If I'm with someone, I'm like, hang on, I have to do my 444. Oh, what's that? For the people that know me, it's just kind of a fun thing. They hear my alarm go off and they all come up behind me with their fours. Um, I even made a little one of those little Google photo books of a bunch of 444s of me with my friends and family and weird places because I just thought it was fun. But really, it's for me. It's about my reminder. And now we're, we're, we're stuck on glitter. Okay, a new personal pointless rule. No glitter. Or you can only put glitter in a bag and leave it there. So Lisa, what's your personal pointless project? I don't have one, but every time I see the clock is 444, I think of you, but I do not hold up four fingers. So this is the thing. I'm still working on Professor <laughs> Forbes to get her to be more playful. I play in other ways. Dance parties is a good one. A couple of people said that for sure. Dance parties. I like to play. Um, this isn't like necessarily in line with your personal pointless exercise, but I do like to play basement soccer with my kids and I do not go easy. I smash them every time. That's competitive. So that's not quite the fun that people are describing, but that's fun to me. Yeah, Brad, every day at 444, text David. I'll give everyone his phone number and we'll just see how long we can do that for. <laughs> That'd be great. So my challenge to everyone here, and then and then we'll we'll turn to um, the next sec segment is the personal pointless project is really a way for you to just kind of like um, mechanically own your own play. I mean, there's nothing special about it. It's it's a game for yourself where you make the rules. And, and I, I, I'll tell you, there's something magical about it. I love the Yahtzee idea. I, I'm trying to remember who said that, but the next time you're going up a staircase, you're gonna feel that urge to yell Yahtzee in the staircase. And I tell you what, it's just a reminder. It's a reminder of playfulness. You know, the next time, um, you, you know, um, what was another one of these? I grew this, oh, a mustache. You grew a mustache. That's a major personal pointless. You should grow, a, a, a mustache every um, every pandemic. But I think it's finding ways to remind yourself, whether it's toys in the background of your Zoom, whether it's something that you wear, maybe every Friday you always wear something in particular, just to see, just to remind yourself not to forget, not to forget play. That's what this is all about. All right, Lisa, keep all it right. on schedule. Thanks for that. I love that. I love that.